a successful edible garden is a productive one. No great revelation there. But how productive? Well, that's entirely up to you. Like anything in life, you can really get the most out of your veggie garden with some careful planning. Here at our place, we love our greens. Right now, we've got plenty of options to bring into the kitchen, including silver beet, celery, lettuce and kale. And the key to regular harvests is preparation and timing. This is all coming along because of a carefully orchestrated planting regime. Now, it's one thing to have a plan, but another to stick to it. If you get that right, you'll be harvesting greens all year round. Take this butter lettuce, for example. They're coming along beautifully. Now, I've clearly overplanted, but that was intentional. So these young ones are ready to harvest, and I'll take out every second one to create some room for the others to grow to full maturity, and that'll extend the time that I'm harvesting. But I've got another tip to make sure the next generation of lettuce is also coming along. Leafy greens are hungry plants, so it's important to build up your soil, especially on sandy soil like mine. Each time I plant, I top dress with compost, and apply pelletised manure. Then give a gentle forking in and level it off for planting. I've got a mix of varieties here. It's oak leaf, mignonette and cos. All delicious, quick growing and planting them into this lovely soft soil feels so good. I'll keep these plants well watered. Plus, give them a liquid feed with fish emulsion every few weeks to keep them rocking along. But you can take succession planting one step further. Alongside the seedlings, I'm sowing lettuce seed in this shallow furrow. And the idea is, as the seedlings finally grow and get harvested, these new ones will be coming on. And between all three plantings, I will be in lettuce for months. When it comes to productive greens, it's hard to go past silver beet. Take this row for example. These plants have been in the ground for about six months and they've been so productive. We've been cropping it regularly and using it in some of our favourite dishes like veggie lasagna and even cheese and spinach triangles. And when we have a surplus, well, we just blanch and freeze it to use it later. I planted this row of silver beet about four weeks ago with seedlings. And as you can see, it's absolutely cranking. Again, the idea is, as the older crop starts to fade away, gets coarse and it finishes up, this one will be ready to eat. Now, one of the things that leafy greens can struggle with is heat. So in addition to building up the soil and giving them regular water, like I've shown you, is you might want to think about giving them some light shade. For example, this is 30% shade, it's horticultural shade cloth. And I've got it just wrapped over a wire frame and made a little tunnel so it sits over the row just like that. By altering the microclimate for these plants, their growing period is extended, which means that cropping is extended too. Another way of managing the warmer conditions is to grow your crops in pots. Keeping your leafy greens transportable means you can move them to spots in the garden with some light shade. I'm a gardener, so I enjoy every step of the process. But the edible part of edible gardening is particularly rewarding. Another one? especially when you're harvesting with your nearest and dearest. Caitlin and I are picking some ingredients to make a green smoothie. How about some celery? Good idea. What do you reckon? Looks good. Thanks, sweetheart. Silver beet first. Load that in. Nice celery. Some apple. 
Now for the banana. Are those bananas from my garden? Sure is. Frozen banana to make it last longer. And then how about a squeeze of lemon? Growing greens is so easy. And whatever your favourite dish is, fresh is best for taste, nutrition and satisfaction. <laughs>